Can you no. have a seat for a second, though? Absolutely, yes, sir. Um, that was driving with that rear door ready? open. That still don't give you probable cause to search the vehicle. Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops. We uncover real stories of corruption within law enforcement. Today's focus, two cases. Corrupt cop busted after intense confrontation. Join us in our mission for justice. Subscribe, like, and share to amplify these crucial voices and hold corrupt cops accountable. If you like this video, press 1. On July 18, 2023, Corporal Hughes from the Mount Dora Police Department responded to several reports accusing off-duty Groveland police officer Joshua Smears of physically assaulting his wife at Frogger Bar and Grill in Mount Dora, Florida. After conducting an investigation at the restaurant, Corporal Hughes, along with Officers Sanchez and Alador of the Mount Dora PD, drove to Mr. Summers' residence, placed him in handcuffs, and escorted him to a police cruiser. Can you just stay with him? I got a call, Bruce. No, I'm, I'm going nowhere. I'm not giving you any um, problems. Nothing. It's not happening. <laughs> hey, she's okay other than that? What happened to Frogger? She's fine? Yeah. Okay. Can we please put these cuffs in front? On oh, what? I'm in front. You know the drill, man. I just, do. I do. I'm listen, claustrophobic I, as fuck. I got you. This is, it's not my call. I know. I know that, that's my supervisor. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? I got you. I got you. And I just stand. Oh, I'm not. I'm not gonna Listen. fight you. I'm not You're gonna fuck you. Like there's nothing. Please. Please put these in front of me. Please. I'm begging. You. Okay. Just give me a second. Let's just hand tight. Once the supervisor figured out what we're gonna do, then we'll go from there. I got you. All right. Okay. That's it. This is a 100% misunderstanding. Oh, yes. Hey, grab it. By her head. How long you work for Groveland? Uh, October will be six years. Six years? Yes, sir. I have a seat there. Just no. have a seat for a second, though. Absolutely, yes, sir. Um, your camera's on, right? Because mine's dead. Yep. Okay. Just, just have him talk about what happened. Okay. Just ask him. He's already told me about my camera's. Huh. Was your body case? Was your dad on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I gotta stop him, but do it again. Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to him. Alright, he's gonna talk to her, but I need to know exactly what, what you already told him, so elaborate. We got Tell me argument. exactly what happened. Wait, look, I, I walked outside onto the patio. If it's comfortable for you, you can get out now. And just, I, I was on the, uh, I was inside. Okay. I walked outside and I asked where one of our friends' wives was. And. Oh. Um, and she got some guy sh with me, so I got okay. her hair, and I was like, are you, are you kidding me right now? Like, she was, I took it as an accusation I was doing something wrong. Okay. With my friend's wife. So she's like, what? I was like, yeah, no. And then I grabbed her hair, and that was that. Like, okay. And then we were good, and then people came out, started and I was like, get the f away from us. I will f you up. And we left and came home, and okay. everything's fine. All right. Like that, I mean, that's a legit story. Officer Summers was involved in an incident at a restaurant where he admitted to pulling his wife's hair, but denied more severe allegations like slamming her head or forcefully strangling her. In Florida, battery is divided into misdemeanor and felony categories, with the latter requiring significant physical harm. Court cases have clarified that great bodily harm means more than just minor or moderate injuries. Regarding domestic battery by strangulation, the law requires knowingly blocking breathing or circulation, which could lead to serious harm. However, not every instance of applying pressure meets this standard, as shown in legal precedents. The arrest affidavit suggests Officer Summers may have engaged in behavior consistent with strangulation, supported by witness accounts and observations of minor redness on his wife's neck. Were your friends there too, or they were, they were not there, it was just the two of you guys? My friends were there. One of them happened to be inside. I didn't know where the other one was. Okay. That's who I was asking about. Okay. So, that was it. How long have you guys been married? Ten years and... What's the day? 18. 27. 
nine days. It'll be ten years. Been together with her for fifteen. Did somebody call you about the incident? And that's what you call our supervisor? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're trying to figure out if we didn't want to disclose any type of information yet. Well, they were. I... In honest to God, it was all a misunderstanding. Right? And that's 100%. Would never, ever put her in jeopardy when he has on her period in the story. Josh, we're getting I'm gonna, the car. I'm going to beg you all night for me. Josh, please, please, the door. please, please put these in front of me. I'm going to have a panic attack. Please, guys, I'm not going to fight Take you. Them. You know that. You know I'm not going to fight you. We're not, not home, man. We're not Stick putting them in the I know your policy is behind the Josh, back. If you weren't drunk, please. I might, but you're drunk, Josh. Get in the back. No, sir, back. I can assure you Josh, I'm not. Come on. Please don't do that. Hey, come on. Please don't push me. Come on. Come on. Get in the car, man. Josh, okay. come on. Please, please, please. I'm begging you nicely. Come on, man. Please, God. Josh, Josh, please. it's our policy. We're not going to change it. So go ahead. Josh, just, I guess you're going to get. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm. I'm not resisting. Please, sit, sit please, 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 put this. I promise please you. put them in. I promise you, there's plenty of room. Those are very loose. Just, I'm begging you nicely. Bro, put them in front of me. Please. Josh, get in the car. Come on. I'm about to get more charges. Come on. Sit down. Oh my God. Take a breath. Take a breath. Josh, take a breath. I can't. I can't. Officer Summers keeps on refusing to follow orders to get into the back seat of a police car, saying he's claustrophobic. He says he'd do it if they handcuff him with his hands in front. Florida law. Section 843.02 says resisting an officer without violence is a misdemeanor, meaning obstructing or opposing an officer's duty without violence. Legal cases like Baxter v. Roberts, 11th Circuit, 2022, and Senko v. Jackson, U.S. District Court, 2022, say that not obeying a lawful command can count as obstruction. So Officer Summers refusing to get in the car could give cops reason to think he broke the law by resisting without violence. Hey, you just latch down on me. Dude, I'm begging you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm no. I will go. Fix I will this, go fix without... This, fix this handcuffs. We'll do two. Can we do two handcuffs? It'll be better. No, but just please. Oh, then I'll put them I'm up front, bro. I'm not kidding. We'll give you two cuffs, okay? As long as you're cool, we're going to do double cuss, but we're not putting them in front of you, bro. Please put them in front of Please, I'm good to go. I, I, I will ride. I'll still go. Undo the cuff. There you go. Please. Behind me is not going to work, even if there's two cuffs. Not two. They're not even going to be pulled behind you, Josh. We cannot do front cuffs. The officer informs Officer Summers that they can't place the handcuffs in front of his body now, even though the Mount Dora Police Department hasn't made its policies and procedures publicly available. Typically, handcuffs are secured behind an arrestee's back to limit their hand and arm movement. When handcuffs are in front, individuals usually have greater arm mobility and can use their hands more effectively. While it's possible Officer Summers has claustrophobia aggravated by handcuffing behind his back, courts generally consider this within acceptable limits if no harm is caused. In the 2009 Boomer v. Lewis case, the court ruled that refusing front handcuffing at an arrestee's request wasn't excessive force, even for medical reasons like spinal problems. Similarly, in the 2014 Young v. Brock case, handcuffing an inmate with back injuries behind the back during a transfer was deemed constitutionally reasonable, considering established protocols and lack of harm. Given these precedents, it's likely that a court would find the Mount Dora officers didn't violate the Constitution by denying Officer Summers front handcuffing. Please. They're barely going to even be behind you. Sure, I'll walk. They're definitely behind Here. me. Here. You're almost able to sit them beside you. I'm begging. We've been more than nice to you, Josh. I've been more than respectful to you as well, Hughes. All right, well then just have a seat, okay? Just take a breath. <sighs> That should be better. Your arms aren't it's behind not, you anymore. It's not. Oh, my God. We'll roll the window down for you, okay? Okay, do me a favor. Check that left arm. God damn. Give me the f***ing and let me do it. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I, put them in front. I'm good. It's 
because you got this these wristbands, man. I, but that's pretty loose now, alright? That's come on. Alright, have a seat. Yeah. I'll drive. Officer Summers got arrested and charged with a serious crime, but the charge got reduced later. Instead of going to trial, he chose a program to avoid a conviction if he completes it successfully. His department put him on leave and is investigating him internally, too. Another police department handled the criminal investigation and did a good job without showing favoritism. Although some questioned the way Officer Summers was restrained during the arrest, it was understandable given the circumstances. However, he's criticized for his violent actions, not listening to the officers, and being emotionally unstable. They suggest firing him for the safety of his spouse and the community. On June 3, 2021, a viewer named Jamar was assisting a family member in moving a large object they had recently acquired, an engine compartment hood from a parts store. However, it wouldn't fit in the trunk, so it was placed in the back seat. Unfortunately, this caused the rear passenger door of the vehicle to remain slightly open. Upon noticing the open door, Officer Jones and an unidentified female officer pulled in front of their vehicle to conduct a felony traffic stop with weapons drawn and requested additional units. I'm not getting out! The driver is apprehended with handcuffs and escorted into the officer's patrol car. You tell him to step out the car! I'm acting like a little bitch! Yeah. I'm scared! Come on over here. I'm acting like a little bitch, huh? Cause I'm, cause I'm, cause I'm scared. I'm scared. You gonna deal with the bitch now? Because why y'all driving with the with the dog? Cause man, we just got the hood from the parts store. Okay, I mean, cause, see, I'm a, look at my rock. That shit comes. I'm just, but I gotta be, but I, but I gotta be, but I gotta be a little bitch. Though, I'm, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For ain't about being bitch. no sorry, but it's the fact that hey man, I don't know what the f you on. I ain't on that. I'm just. How do go, I know that? I'm trying to go to God. How do I know that? I'm just letting you know. I got a door wide open, and I got a dude driving down the street. What the f I supposed to think? I don't know. Exactly. They then move to extract Jamar as supporting units arrive on scene. Step out the vehicle. I don't want to get shot. I'm you not opening the door. door. You're not gonna get shot. No, I ain't getting out. Here. You're not gonna get shot. We just need you to step out. I'm not getting out the car. You see my hand. We still need you to get out the car. I'm not getting out. I'm telling you that now. I ain't do nothing wrong. I know my rights. He's the driver. Talk to him. Please, give him a plate. Run that plate. Don't touch me. Man, put the phone down, man. I'm not putting out on my rights. Man, you talk to him. Down. You talk to him. He's the driver. Man, I'm not getting out. Down, I'm man. not getting out the car. What? I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm not if giving up my rights. Listen, listen to me. I'm not First giving up my rights. That's all I'm gonna tell you. What you talking about? You not. I didn't do anything right. wrong. He's the driver. You the passenger in the yeah, car. Yeah, I'm the passenger. So just step out the car. It's not your car. It's his car. Yeah, I'm not. I don't consent to no sir. I'm not being patted down. You're not touching me. Nobody's doing anything to me. First of all, you can't tell me my job. You can record that. Okay, I'm recording. Okay, I'm recording too. So, so do, we both record. So do whatever it is you think right. Man, step out the car. I'm not stepping out. You can forcefully take me out if you want. The scenario is about whether passengers have to follow cops' orders to get out of a car during a traffic stop. The Supreme Court has made some controversial rulings like in Pennsylvania v. Mim, where they said it's okay for cops to make drivers get out of the car, even if they don't plan to search it. Justice Thurgood Marshall disagreed, saying searches should relate to why the stop happened like not just because the license plate is expired, but the majority of the court sided with the cops, meaning everyone in the car has to get out during a traffic stop, as per rulings like Marilyn V. Wilson. Dude, I know my rights. Car, I know man. my rights. What, 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 what I do wrong? It's not your car. What the, this, this is his car. Step out. We're, we're giving we you a direct that. order to step out we of the car. Know, That's not know. lawful. We know that. That is not lawful. We just need you to step out the car. For what? What I do wrong? That's not a lawful command. So, let me, is there anything in the car that, that we need to know about that may... Ain't nothing in this car. In okay, well, what's the big deal? Just because I, I got rights. That's the big deal. I'm not giving my rights up. What rights you talking about? I, I, you what don't have no right to question about? me right now. You can talk to the driver. You can talk to the driver. I didn't do anything man, wrong. You need to come out this car. I need to search this car because this guy, this guy was driving with that rear door Ready? open. That still don't, don't give you probable car. cause to search the vehicle. What's your probable cause? Man, we ain't gonna look, argue about what's that. What's the probable cause? Look, you're not a lawyer. What's the, I know my rights. What's the probable you're, cause? You're what's, what's the probable cause to search this car? 
Several Chicago police officers, including Parker, Martin Jones, and an unidentified female officer, were involved in a troubling incident. They violated Jamar's rights by deleting a video he was recording on his phone, showing a disregard for ethics and the law. Officer Martin's actions, witnessed by Officers Parker and the unidentified female officer, suggest an attempt to cover up the truth and violate established rights. Their failure to object or intervene suggests they were complicit. Additionally, by not turning off their body cameras, they potentially committed felonies by tampering with evidence. This behavior damages the reputation of the Chicago Police Department. Later, officers proceeded to search the vehicle with excessive scrutiny, indicating a pattern of misconduct. A few minutes later, the device reappears with its screen illuminated, but shortly after, it shuts off again. Officer Parker then remarks to Officer Martin that Jamar is fortunate, incredibly so. It's implied that he's suggesting if they didn't have body cameras, the outcome of the encounter would have been vastly different. As he mentions Jamar's luck, Officer Martin turns and directly faces Officer Parker's camera. Lucky? He's so lucky about this? Lucky? Lucky, lucky, lucky. lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Shortly after that, all the officers simultaneously deactivated their body cameras before removing Jamar's handcuffs. Once released, Jamar informed me that he went back to the vehicle to retrieve his phone. Officer Parker was seated in the driver's seat preparing to drive the car to the police station. As Jamar reached into the vehicle, he claims that Officer Parker suddenly accelerated, causing the rear passenger door to slam shut and crush Jamar's finger. Officer Archer contacted a supervisor to report the incident, but the audio is heavily redacted. But EMS was a passenger in the vehicle. That 554 stopped and, and we assisted them. They had to drive all the way. Uh, passenger was refusing to get out the vehicle. And he, he wasn't going to get out because he didn't want to get shot. I said, well, yeah, so, so I told him, nobody is going to shoot you. We just asked you to get out. They cuffed him and pulled him out the car. And he's, you know, doing all this talking about he knows his rights and all of this stuff and ask you to get out. We're going to run your information and we're going to let you go if you come back clear. Okay, I'm watching them now because the uh, zone sent us back over here. And she said that he's 506, uh, cuffed him and pulled him out the car. Jamar asked for an ambulance, but the officers declined to contact EMS, so Jamar dialed 911 himself to summon medics. That's not, that's not true. It is true. It's very true. I don't want to talk to you. They also went in my phone and deleted the video on my phone, which we're not allowed to do. Jamar got caught up with the cops when they busted the driver for driving without a license and having a messed up registration, but those charges got dropped later. Jamar managed to recover a deleted video from his phone and filed a complaint with the Civilian Office of Police Accountability in Chicago. He's also gearing up to sue the officers with a lawyer. The whole thing started over a minor issue with Jamar's car. And while they could have just rented a truck or borrowed a bigger ride, things got out of hand. This mess shines a light on bigger issues with how cops handle situations, reminding us why it's important to protect our rights and keep cops in check. On November 23, 2016, Officer James Sanders of the Social Circle Police Department in Georgia was finishing up a regular traffic stop when a passerby, filled with hostility, started yelling insults at him without warning. In response, Officer Sanders swiftly switched to pursuit mode in his patrol vehicle, determined to catch the unruly person who had disrespected him. How's it going? Licensed insurance. That's why I got pulled over? Yeah, I'll be glad to tell you in just one second. Take your time, go Is everybody all right? Yes, sir. What's up, Sanders? What's going on? Bravo. Who yelled out the window? Uh, 
yeah, come on back here with me, Mr. Bird. Yes, sir. Mr. Bird. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you one time. How long you had your license? Over six months. Over six months. So everybody, you're good to haul everybody around in there, yes, okay? Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you one time. Yes, sir. All right? If you don't, we're going to go another route with it. Who yelled out of your Jeep when you went by us? It was Brandon. Who? Brandon. Which one's Brandon? In the front seat. Got the Jeep. What'd you have to say? Nothing. No, tell me one more time you're going to jail, son. Officer Sanders warned Mr. Hughes in jail that if he shouted out again from the window, he could end up in immediate trouble. Sanders brought up legal examples, especially from the American Truckers Association, and stressed the potential consequences. He mentioned the Supreme Court's protection of profanity under the First Amendment, extending it to criticisms of law enforcement. The 1971 case Cohen v. California recognized the subjective nature of vulgarity, emphasizing the importance of safeguarding speech critical of the government. While some speech regulation is acknowledged, the 1942 case Chaplinsky v. New Hampshire introduced the concept of fighting words. However, subsequent decisions continue to uphold First Amendment protection for government criticisms. In the context of police encounters, the 1987 case Houston v. Hill confirms the First Amendment's protection of verbal criticism and challenge to law enforcement, unless there is a clear and present danger of a serious problem. Considering Mr. Hughes's expression of his opinion without personal insults or threats, it is unlikely that a court would justify the encounter based solely on his choice of words. What's your name? Brandon Hughes. Brandon Hughes. Yes, I know who you are. Is there something you need to say to us that you want to yell out the window? No, Who are you yelling at? Hey, look at me when you talk to me, son. Who are you going to yell at? William Robert What'd you say? Say. F the police. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Get your hands out of your pockets. Yes, sir. Why do you want to say that to the police? I don't know. Y'all protect us. I shouldn't have. No, I ain't protecting you. All valid. Yes, sir. Negative. F the police. Why, you can get back. Why do you want to f the police, son? I don't. Why you say it then? You think it's gonna make you a bad or something no, in front sir, of everybody? No, sir, I don't. Cause I'm getting fussed out right now. You want the police? No, sir, well, here I, I am, right I here, brother. I don't want to. Why not? You're a tough to. guy. Come on. I'm not tough. Huh? I'm not tough. You seem like a little baby the day you was in court. Remember? Yes, sir. I'm giving you every opportunity. No, sir. Then why you want to yell about it when you're in front of your buddies right there? Is it cool? No, sir. You, you trying to be a bad ass in front of them? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. I'm giving you every opportunity yes, to f me up. You yes, understand? Sir. Yes, sir. Officer Sanders is intentionally trying to provoke Mr. Hughes into a physical fight by using aggressive language and behavior. The discussion involves legal concepts like the fighting words doctrine and references a Supreme Court case from 1969, which clarified that the First Amendment doesn't protect speech that constitutes a true threat although the exact definition remains unclear. Another case in 1989 explored the protection of free speech in the context of flag burning, concluding that expressions of discontent without an invitation to physical violence are protected. The ruling emphasizes the importance of context, stating that actions like burning a flag are not an invitation to exchange fisticuffs. The text then suggests that expressions genuinely inviting physical altercation could be considered criminal under applicable laws. Specifically, Georgia's Criminal Code, section the 16th of November 39, defines disorderly conduct as a violation when someone's violent or tumultuous behavior causes reasonable fear for another person's life, limb, or health. The analysis raises concerns about Officer Sanders potentially violating this code by provocatively inviting Mr. Hughes to engage in physical combat, questioning the legitimacy of the officer's actions. Now let me ask you this, what have I ever done to you? Nothing at all. Not a damn thing. What has my partner ever done to you? Not a thing. Not a thing, right? Yes, sir. So why do you want the police? Being now it's a little bit more than being stupid is what I think. So do you, let me ask you something. Next time you get caught selling weed or having weed on you, do you think somebody's going to try to cut you a break? If I go to jerk and everybody out that jeep and I find one ounce of weed, do you think I'm going to take everybody to jail? Yes, sir. 
No, sir, just me. No, no, I'm gonna take every one of your friends to jail. Yes, sir. How old are you? Six, seventeen. I didn't know y'all could be so stupid anymore. Everybody get out of the Jeep. Yes, sir. You want to see how big of a police is going to be? I'm fixing to show you. I'm fixing to search every one of you and every ounce of this Jeep. Now, so help me God, if I find one seed, every one of you is going to go to jail because of the police, son. Officer Sanders, whose parent is a cop, threatens to search and cuff everyone in a vehicle because of Mr. Hughes's loose talk. He performs a routine pat-down using the plain view tactic to avoid needing a warrant. This tactic allows cops to seize anything suspicious they see during a legal visual inspection. While courts initially approved this, a change happened in 71 with the Coolidge versus New Hampshire case, stating that discoveries must be accidental. However, in 90, the Horton versus California case changed this, setting a three-step checklist for a valid plain view search. Despite these rules, Officer Sanders' initial actions are questionable, suggesting he may not have followed proper procedures. It's funny, ain't it? No, sir. Did y'all laugh? No, sir. Huh? Did you laugh? No, sir. Did you laugh? No, you think it's funny? This smart ass right here says the police. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who you want first? Bird, you can get back in the Jeep, son. You ain't done nothing wrong. Y'all two pile back in there. Y'all ain't done nothing wrong. Ain't no sense in y'all paying for this stupid. That's, what you mean? That's that knucklehead off of Elm Street right there. Yeah, yeah that, that I remember y'all from. I, I, he don't believe it, but I swear to God I can beat him in basketball. You can't I'm shoot. You still got to play me. I'm still where you play. I've been asking you since I was on Elm Street. Dude, let me tell you something. I got two torn, lig torn up ligaments. I will smoke both of y'all. Y'all can play two on one. Take you let me tell you something. He's basically, you'd basically. You be on your little skinny ass. I'm telling you, you ever seen Charles Barkley play? Hey, dude, I'm gonna be honest with you. Technically, I can't see, I can't search your Jeep, and I can't touch y'all, and I don't want to. I'm not a like that, okay? But I'm gonna tell you something. If you hang around like this, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna mess with you. Hey, let me ask you this. You upset because you did it? Or you upset because you got caught? Both is disrespectful and I was raised better. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know that I don't know that you I, I don't know. I mean, what you did is not breaking the law. You didn't break the law, it's freedom of speech. Yes, sir. But still, I mean, just to blatantly out, just hollering out while we're trying to, while we're trying to do our job. Yes, sir. What if that was a DUI person? I just stopped on the side of the road and got them off the street, keep them hitting somebody in your family and killing them. Yes, sir. You got to You got to look at it. You know what I'm saying? That it all goes around. I mean, why do you really feel like that? Because you really feel like that. Huh? I mean, what? I would be okay if you just trying to be a bad ass in front of your boys. Because you obviously have some pent-up frustrations. And I'm going to tell you right now, neither one of us done anything to you. So tell, so tell them, be honest. Be honest about it. Why in the world do you really feel that way? Because deep down you, you have to feel it. Because that, that that you know what I've been I've been I've done some crazy stuff in my life. Not once have I ever said that. Officer Sanders, realizing he couldn't search the vehicle legally, let Mr. Hughes go. Someone anonymously reported the incident to Police Chief Tyrone Oliver, who, after checking the body camera footage, put Officer Sanders on leave and eventually fired him due to a history of issues. Officer Sanders appealed to the city council, but city manager Adele Shermer upheld the termination. The situation underscores Officer Sanders' disregard for civil liberties and a basic misunderstanding of the First Amendment. Chief Oliver said police need tough skin, but shouldn't intimidate people for expressing their opinions. The firm actions by Chief Oliver and Social Circle's leadership set a good example, encouraging other cities to discourage such behavior in their police force. Thank you for watching our video on two cases of corrupt cops busted after intense confrontations. Don't hesitate to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay updated on such important matters. Hit the like button and share this video to spread awareness about corruption within law enforcement. Let's take action together to build a fair and accountable community. Thank you for your support.